she's in here just to sing in Victoria. <laughs> All right, so the next arrangement I'm gonna do is an arrangement that we have on our website. Okay, so this is our base. I'm gonna green it out just like I did the one before. Now this one on the website has ribbon, so we'll add a bow to this one. What's the name of this one? Sweet um, spring. Spring is here. Spring is here. So this one is actually a lot of pinks and peaches, some greens, really pretty. This is one that Victoria created for our website. <laughs> Victoria's creation. So I'm going to start out with a couple of hydrangeas. To come back in a minute with all our pretty foliage. We do still have some pretty foliage here that I'm going to use in it, but I thought I would add my hydrangeas. Um, Kim Hatton asks, can you explain your placement of each flower? <laughs> I can try, Kim. Honestly, it's just second nature. Um, with hydrangeas, I like to place hydrangeas first because hydrangeas always do a really good base. It's going to be more of that grid. I don't know if you saw the video when I made um, I made the armature with with it was wire and so all it's doing is it's giving me a grid that holds those flowers in place so my flowers aren't going to be topsy-turvy in the arrangement um, and next I always like to come in with some height and so I use these bells of Ireland as height um, and like this one has some bumped leaves down at the bottom, so I'm just stripping anything that looks bad off the flower. I'm just stripping that and dropping it in the floor so that I get to sweep that up later. Um, and so I always like to um, place my line flowers in next because my line flowers kind of give me my height in my arrangement. Now with this line flower, I don't want to do two line flowers because to me personally, it looks like antenna like a little bug with antennas. Anytime you look at an arrangement, and I always want you to feel like when you make a flower arrangement, you are the artist. If you think it's pretty, that's all that matters, okay? There are rules in floral design, and most of the time they're meant to be broken. So I don't want you to feel like when you make a design that if you don't have threes of everything, that it can't be right because it can, you're an artist and it can be right, okay? The only reason I prefer, now sometimes I'll do two, but if I'm using other line flower, I will do, um, I, I might do two and then two or three of the other line flower. Um, the reason I'm going to use three in this arrangement is because I don't want it to look like a bug sandy. Anytime you're arranging, stand back from your flower arrangement. If it looks like something's looking at you, add another flower, um, just so that you don't have two big eyes looking at you. Um, and just kind of stand back and look at it and make sure it looks okay. And then if it's pretty to you, that sounds perfect, okay? Um, last night I did a class with some ladies. We made wreaths. And that's exactly what I told those ladies. This wreath is going on your front door. This is not, I mean, you want it to be something that's pretty to other people, of course, but the most important person that it needs to be pretty to is you. So this is yours. I don't want you to feel like because I'm designing it this way that that's the rule, because that's not, it's not. You're an artist, you are the artist, you make it as pretty as you want, okay? Um, these are Alstroemeria lilies. I love Alstroemeria lilies because they're long-lasting. They're pretty flowers and they're long-lasting. And anything that lasts a long time makes me happy because that means it's going to last a long time for the customer. So I'm going to tuck. Now with this, you'll find, and honestly, I didn't realize this, because I don't watch myself design, I just do it. It's kind of second nature. I just do it, right? Um, I had someone the other day say, Mommy, you tend to, now you're looking at me and I'm backwards. I'm actually right-handed, but it looks like I'm left-handed in this video. And so they said, you favor the left-hand side of your arrangements. And I didn't realize that. So she thought, watching me design, she thinks that I, or I'm sure I do. 
it's not a thought she thinks. I'm sure I, pop, I do. But I put more flowers on my right hand side than I do my left, just frankly because I'm right handed. And I didn't realize that, so I'm gonna work on that. Um, so these Astros, I just kind of put them here and there in the arrangement. You hear the phone ringing, guys. It's ringing because we're closed. That's why we don't have anybody here answering the phone. Um, but we do have an answering machine. So I just want you to know we're not ignoring people. We're just closed. And so it's just Victoria and I this afternoon. Okay, what else, Victoria? Next. We have these Shimmer Roses, which are fabulous. They're a beautiful peach colored rose. So look how pretty that peach is. Um, and with those, I am just going to add some wire to them. That's Jason. Miss Sherry says, I love that you do pull off the hydrang pull all the hydrangea leaves off. It makes them last so much longer. Yes, ma'am. And it's just important that they last longer. You know, that's the most important thing. Um, I mean, besides that it's a pretty arrangement. I want it to be a beautiful arrangement for my customer. But I want them to, to look at it and say, oh my goodness, it lasted forever. That's important. If it lasts a long time, that's important. And so that's the reason I like to um, pull all of the foliage off of the hydrangeas. And that's the reason I wire all my roses. So I don't know if you've watched any of my videos. I'm just taking this small piece of wire. I'm sticking it in that calyx and I'm just wrapping it around that stem. Victoria, when you step forward, will you hand me another wire right here? Thank you, Dolly. Now I wire these roses because I want their heads to stay, stay standing up. I don't want them to dip. Okay, now I'm gonna graduate these down. And what that means is I'm gonna have a, a tall, a medium, and a short. And how I usually um, how I usually figure out the height is you see me holding holding. So this is my stem. This is the height of my stem. So for me to figure out where I need it in this arrangement, I'm going to take it and I'm going to hold it off the table. I want it to be right about there. Okay. So I'm holding it off the table here. I don't know if you can see. So I'm holding it off the table here. I'm going to cut it right here because that's going to give me the height that I need it in this arrangement. Now, I want you to remember, when cutting your stems, always cut less than you think you need. Because you can always cut more, but you can't add onto the arrangement, onto the stem, okay? So always cut less than you think you need to, because you can't add back, okay? So there's our peach, or our shimmer roses. We've got some um, house for Mary Lily, some hydrangeas, some bells of Ireland. What else did we have in this pretty arrangement? Some Gerber daisies. So we've got some pretty pink Gerber daisies. And I'm gonna wire their heads just because they'll mind me. Miss Tracy asks, when you cut the bottom of the flowers, do you cut it straight across or at an angle? You cut it at an angle, and you cut it at an angle because if it sits flat on the, on the bottom of the vase, it's just like a straw. And if it sits flat on the bottom of the base, it's harder for the stem to take up water. So this one's flat. So you see it's sitting flat on my finger, okay? If I cut it at an angle, what it's going to do is it's gonna give it more, more room to drink. So it's gonna, first of all, that point's gonna sit on the bottom of that base and it's gonna give it more, more area to be able to pull the water up. Now you have to be very careful with Gerber daisies because their little necks are very tender and they pop easily, okay? So be careful. So right now what I'm doing is, I'm looking at these two Gerberas. This one's a little smaller than this one, okay? So you can, uh, it's hard to tell, it's not a whole lot smaller, but it's a little bit smaller. This one is going to be on top so that the larger one is the heavier one visually, okay? It's going to be the same with color. 
I don't know, I know I've taught it, but with color, color has visual weight. And so you're gonna put the darker color on the bottom and the lighter color on the top. And I kind of teach that with balloons. Like when you're blowing up balloons, they all weigh the same, right? They're all the same weight, they all float the same. But you have a purple balloon and you have a yellow balloon. Well, visually, the purple balloon is heavier than the yellow balloon. So you're gonna put the purple balloon on the bottom and the yellow balloon on the top. And it's the same in an arrangement. Um, visually, the larger one looks heavier and the smaller one looks a little bit lighter. And so that's why you put the larger one on the bottom. Add a little bit of green dragon, which I love. Am I talking too much today? I'm talking too much. Miss Susan asks, <laughs> will you be delivering on Sunday? We will not. We are not going to deliver on Sunday. Um, we never have. Um, I always go out to Mama's house. Jason, my husband, will go to his Mama's house. Sometimes that we might, um, we might both go. It just kind of depends. But most often, I'll go to my mother's house, and he might go to his mother's house. Um, and I just take the day off. I will go to church. <laughs> we'll go to church Sunday morning, and then I'll go out to Mama's and spend the afternoon with Mama and Daddy. And um, Jason will probably go to his mother's house and visit with her. Um, but yes, we take the day off. We, we never open on Sunday. We don't even do Sunday Valentine's Day. We close because we always close on Sunday. Um, and so these are lilies. That's that double lily. I'm gonna tuck it in. Now this is an upgraded arrangement. This, this is basically the original on the, um, on the page, but because it's upgraded, I'm gonna add a few beautiful lilies to it. orange spray roses in it too, didn't it? Yes. And some solid echo. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of stems of orange spray roses. Miss Shirley says, no, you're not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to be talking a lot. <laughs> okay. So with these spray roses, I'm just coming in and filling any empty spaces. just kind of scattering them around. Miss Tracy asks, do you go to school to be a flower designer? I went to school to be a flower designer. Not everybody does. Some people, um, some people just go and work at a flower shop and learn from the designers there. I did go to school to be a floral designer. I sure did. Most of the um, school, though, was not only floral design. It was not only art. It was not only color. Um, we did a lot of horticulture, learning about plants, how to take care of plants. We also learned a lot about business and how to run a business successfully. I did not go to school. Victoria <laughs> did not go to school to be a floral designer. I have taught Victoria, well, Callie and Robbie, and I have taught Victoria everything she knows about floral design. Um, but I will say that Victoria is a fine artist. And what that means is I am not a fine artist. Victoria can draw me and it will resemble me. And I cannot draw a stick figure, okay? But Victoria can, she can paint, she can draw, she does beautiful artwork. And I am not a fine artist, I cannot sit down and hand draw or paint. Now I can paint, I can paint a daisy, but it's not gonna look like a real daisy. It's going to look like a cartoon style <laughs> daisy. Now Victoria can make a row, she can make this lily look like this lily, where I can't. But so she saw color and she understood weight in color. It's funny how I, you don't realize how important color and the weight of color is until you really get into design work. Do you, Victoria? I think I had to teach her that. Um, but she knew 
art and she knew how to work with color and how to change color. Um, Victoria tends to have to think a lot. <laughs> like uh, I thought, I, I said to Robert, I don't think I can teach Victoria. I don't know. She just thinks, you know. <laughs> and so finally I looked at her and I said, go in that cooler and you come back with some flowers and you're going to put this flower arrangement together. And every time when she started taking too long, I said, quit thinking. Now just do it. And so she did. But she watched me too. Like she stood there and watched. And because she was already an artist, it wasn't hard for her to pick it up. All right, so there's our arrangement. What did we say this was called? Um, it's called Spring is Here. Spring is Here, and I am going to add some ribbon to this arrangement because that's what the picture called for. Now, the picture actually had a brighter lime green. I'm gonna put this more muted lime green just because it makes me happy. And <laughs> I'm the designer, so I am going to put this muted green on there. It's kind of a sage green that's really pretty. Miss Kim, I do not sell my art yet. She's I'm, working on it, though. I'm working on it. She is. She's working on that. Um, I should share some pictures with them on our story, just so that they can kind of see how amazing of an artist you are. Now, she comes from a very artistic family, though. Her sister is a beautiful, like her sister has painted murals, mm -hmm. has done all sorts of beautiful things, and so Victoria comes from an artistic family. So when she came in, we knew that we could teach her. It was just a different medium. You know, flowers are just a different medium. There was one time when I did cakes. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I can decorate a cake, but I'm not the cake boss. Like, I cannot make it look like an armadillo, okay? <laughs> there is no way I can make this look like something when it's just cake. I can do a birthday cake, I can do a, a simple wedding cake, but I can't make it look like the cake balls. And so I learned really quickly that when it takes me four hours from start to finish to make a $50 cake, that that was not cost efficient. If I can make a $50 arrangement in three minutes, I felt like, yeah, cake decorating was really not for me. Mm -hmm. And it was stressful. Cakes were stressful. Flowers are not stressful. Unless your cooler freezes all your flowers. That's stressful. But mm -hmm. the flowers don't tend to be very stressful. All right, there's our pretty ribbon tucked in that arrangement. So I think that's so pretty. We need to sell more of these for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to post this one online. <laughs> it is so pretty. Any more questions, Miss Victoria? Uh, Miss Sherry asks, how much would you price that upgrade design? This one is 70, 70 or 75 for this arrangement. Miss um, Julie asks, or she says, we would love to get a plant like the tall Julie did. Um, we would love to get a plant like the tall green one. Where can I find one I can just find the seeds? Like the tall green one, like the Bells of Ireland, like this? Or the um, Veronica? I've never planted Bells of Ireland. I have honestly never seen them planted in our zone. I have seen Veronica grown, and I'm in zone seven. Um, so when you look at a map and you, um, and you figure out exactly what your growing um, zone is, we happen in Mississippi, I'm in zone seven. I'm North Mississippi, um, and so we're in zone seven. And I know Veronica grows, but it doesn't grow like this. Like I've never seen it grow in where you can go out and cut it like this. It usually grows shorter and it's in a pot usually, um, but I've never seen it growing where I could go and cut it for an arrangement. Um, she says, yes, the Bells of Ireland. The Bells of Ireland. I have no idea. I don't know if you could buy them as a plant versus the seed. Quite honestly, you're going to get more bang for your buck if you use it as seed. Um, and the reason is you get so much for your money. So, the other day, you saw me plant seeds in my, um, in my garden boxes at my house. Y'all, I have tons and tons of little seedlings coming up. And so what I'm doing is I'm transplanting them because I'm afraid, and people have told me on that video, that they're going to choke each other out. If, they get, if you get too many in a growing area, it's going to choke some of them out. And so I have been moving them to pots. I bet I have, I bet I have eight pots of seedlings 
and then I have two huge planters of seedlings. I am so excited to see what all of these seeds come out. And I mean, I think I spent a whole $5 on seeds and I have eight pots and two huge planters filled with seed, with, with seedlings. So I will tell you that you're going to get the most bang for your buck with seeds on any kind of plants. Um, yeah, I would certainly plant seeds over buying plants. Now, instant gratification is hard. You know, a lot of times I'll buy things already pretty because I want to see them already pretty. But I have enjoyed watching the zinnias um, come up and watching the marigolds come up and I can't wait to see what the mixed seeds are because that's exciting to me. Um, and there's, I mean, they're really taking off. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to see what they're gonna look like. Miss Julie says thank you. You're welcome, Miss Julie, you're welcome. Good luck and take pictures. We wanna see them if they start to grow. But be sure that you check your zone. Make sure that they're gonna grow in your area um, because they're gonna do so much better if they're in your happy area. You know, zone seven, you always go for zone seven plants, you know, and it'll tell you on the plants and on the seeds, you can even Google it, and it's gonna tell you where it's happiest growing. Um, because if it's not happy, it's not going to grow and you're wasting your money. Any more questions, Miss Victoria? Uh, Miss Susan, I do not do watercolor. I wish I could. You can, you just <laughs> haven't. Yeah, I guess it's just I haven't played around with it enough. To yes, you can do watercolor. <laughs> you can, I know you can. Yeah. I but love watercolor. So pretty. Oh, watercolor is fantastic. Yes, and when you do that, first one, it can go on my wall. <laughs> I would be so proud to display your watercolor painting. Yeah, I'll just have to practice. More yes, you practice. You practice. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming here this afternoon. I know that it was kind of short. Um, if you have any more questions, please be sure to ask those in the comments. You know that I'm going to come back and answer any kind of questions you might have. Um, if you would, please give us a thumbs up or a heart and let us know that you watched the video and that you really enjoyed it. And if you would, sprinkle this video so your friends can see it too. Guys, thank you so much for being here and I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.
Just you. 